Spectrum Lanes in Wyoming, Michigan, near Grand Rapids. We continue our march to the World Championship on ESPN. Live coverage of the PBA Tour brings you the Banquet Classic. Five of the sport's best going for this week's title and valuable tour points. Now let's meet our five finalists. In his second season on tour, looking for his first PBA win from Erie, Pennsylvania, Mike Machuga. A PBA Hall of Famer from Buffalo, New York, making his first TV appearance since 1999. He has nine career wins, Tom Baker. From Munster, Indiana, in his 15th year on tour, he finished in second place in the 1993 PBA National Championship, Eugene McCune. He enters the championship round with 19 career titles. A two-time PBA player of the year from Claremont, Florida, Norm Duke. And from Ocala, Florida, second on the all-time PBA win list with 35. A Hall of Famer making his third straight TV appearance, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Those are the five finalists for the 2002 Banquet Classic here in the championship round. Now let's look at the matchup with our Randy Peterson. Randy, congrats to you. Round of eight last night. A great showing before losing to Eugene McCune. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Dave. Our wild card matchup is a rematch of the round of eight between Tom Baker and Mike Machuga. Walter Ray Williams Jr. awaits the winner of that wild card in the semis. In the other semifinal match, Eugene McCune in search of his first career title takes off, takes on Hall of Famer Norm Duke on TV for the first time. We are ready to go. Baker Machine in the wild card match. From Erie, Pennsylvania. In search of his first career title. Last year, finished dead last at this venue, he told us. Wants to get back at the ball in center. And a chance for a title. Great start. Trips out the 10 pin. He's pumped. <laughs> Got a great break there. Trip in the 10 late. And a nice start for Mr. Machuga. Now it's Tom Baker. 48 years old. The oldest amongst our five finalists today. 23rd a week ago. Greater Detroit Open. Look out. 7-pin. Stands. Dave Ryan, I crossed with Tommy this week in qualifying. He made the 7-10 split. It took about a 204 average to make the, the cut, to make the round of 64. Tommy averaged almost 240. He made the lanes look stupid easy. Uh, Never mark. Good start for Tom Baker. He told me that you told him he was looking so good early on prior to the round of 32 win over Mitchell. Just lost two matches in the Machuga match. That was in the round of eight last night. You said you're going to make the show. First day of qualifying, he looked that good. Well, he threw it so good, and his, you know, the thing that really impressed me was his direction. Ball looked like it just did the same thing every time down the lane. Ball comes in light. Catches just a little piece of the head pin. Leaves the 258. Now here's the tricky part. You gotta get the ball to hook in the spare to cover that back pin, the eight pin. Cover all three pins with the ball. Difficult spare? Not not easy. Just because of that eight pin. On lane 20, one of the TV pair. Covers them nicely for a mark. That's Mike Machuga, rookie last year. Second career TV appearance. Went all the way to the title match at the Greater Cincinnati Classic in Kentucky last year. Good news to Walter Ray Williams Jr. and some big trouble. As he comes in high and now has a difficult spare. Well, that ball goes right through the nose and he gets four. Makeable spare. Got a good ball to the right side over here. 
a hook ball, cover that back, that back nine pin, throw the three pin over into the four seven. Can he cover? Not far enough right. Not enough, only a seven pin count, so an early open frame for Mike Machuga. And he told us yesterday, before his first TV appearance last year, it was last November, outside Cincinnati, his sister watching closely, Lori, following younger Mike, younger brother Mike Loyola here on the tour. He said before that match on TV last year, he was so nervous his hands were shaking uncontrollably, but he's got better control now. Now he follows up a poor shot on the right lane with a really good shot on the left. Call that high flush. Post that shot nicely. Nice reaction. Pretty good week for Tom Baker. As we told you during qualifying on Thursday, things really looked good for him, and he never slowed down. Yeah. Right in the pocket on lane 30. The amazing thing to me when I talked to Tommy Baker earlier was, you know, at 48 years of age, how do you handle it mentally? You know, the older you get, the tougher it gets mentally on you. And he said, Rainey, he says, I just, I don't feel like I'm 48. He says, I keep myself in great shape and I just don't feel it. Recently married just six weeks ago to Maria, who's from Panama. Unfortunately, Maria's not feeling well back home in Buffalo. Strike here and he's got a 23 pin lead. He's not won in five years since 97 Harrisburg, PA. Yeah. Good start here in the wild card match. A little bit different release than we normally see. Tommy's a little more on the side of the ball, a little more of a spin release, but with his soft ball speed and a really high friction surface bowling ball, he made the lanes look real easy on a tough pattern. Doubles and frames three and four. Machuga working on a strike. Strike here, he's down 13 pins. <laughs> Somehow that pin stays up, unbelievable. It got hit like three times and it didn't go down. Ball comes in a little light, head pin goes to the sidewall, comes out, doink, doink, mm. oh. The old high low on the pin, two pins stayed up there, but he covers for a mark. We see the shot clock, which is 25 seconds to release that shot. Matches this week, Parker Bone III still unable to make a TV show, last year's player of the year. Mike Pachuga bowled 300 in that match against Parker Bone, the fourth game. Pocket there in late 29. Well, he zeroed in on the left lane. High and light on the right lane. Sister Lori enjoys that. Nine victories, but none since 97. First one in 1980. He's been a PBA member since 1976. Went from 86 to 96 without winning a tour title. Strikes there. He won again the next year and has not been victorious since. Fifty-second career TV appearance, but the first of this season. He's a couple of matches under 500, a career record on TV. Watch what Tommy does with his right hand when he sets up. That hand on the side, number one. What he does with his index finger and his pinky. The index finger is the closer to the middle finger. Usually it's the other way around. You spread the index finger out, and that pinky finger is close to the ring finger. Looking for a four-bagger and a 43-pin lead. Double wood there, 2-8. A little, little fast there, a little too much of a spin. You see Tommy kind of fiddling with his wrist there, showing you that he did spin that a little bit too much. And again, similar to the spare that he left in the second frame, only now he doesn't have the five pin with it. Same idea, cover the two and the eight with the bowling ball. You saw the numbers, multi-pin conversions. Trying to increase the percentage.
the leader after the first day of qualifying. 232.44 average for the first nine games. He has been on a roll since. And in the wild card match, has a 31 pin lead. On the second year PBA Pro, Mike Machuga of Erie, Pennsylvania. More wild card action when we come back to Grand Rapids. Spectrum Lanes in Western Michigan, Wyoming, near Grand Rapids, now has hosted a PBA Tour event five times, three times in the 90s. Welcome back, everyone. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire PBA crew. Glad to have you with us on this stop from Grand Rapids. 63 titles and six majors amongst our five finalists, Randy. And the leader, Walter Ray Williams, is red hot. Does he appear unbeatable to you? Well, I mean, you could argue that point. I mean, he's there. He's here each and every week. But uh, I think you, the guy you got to watch out for is Norm Duke. He told me earlier today he will win. Outstanding start for Duke in this tournament. He continues to bowl pretty well here into the final five. Oil pattern for this week, ready? Well, it's the same pattern we had in KC. Pattern C, and for me it was confusing, but the one place you can't play is in the middle of the lane. There's a big hump there and it's really dry. You're going to see the players playing out, or if they're playing in, they're going in to out. For more about the oil pattern, log on, pba.com, your best website. For the sport, you can also hear live webcast, the round of 16, round of 8 match play. Here's the sixth frame now for Machuga. This has been the trouble lane. Strike here, he's down 21 pins. Can he stay out of trouble? That pin goes down late. Big trip two pin there. And that was a break he was looking for in the fourth frame. Well, watch these eyes. Right as he lets go of it, the eyes look down at the floor. What a huge break. Cuts the lead to 21. Working on two, a strike in the seventh. He can cut the deficit to 11 pins. There has been one wild card champion this year. Dave D'Antremont in the opener in Wichita. Pocket, late, late messenger coming across the 10 pin, but fails to strike it. Right back at you. And it's the, the toughest thing for pro bowlers to swallow. You know, he makes that shot on the right lane where he trips the two pin for a strike, comes back with a really good shot and gets nine. Low friction ball to spare. Baker works on a strike. Works on a spare, make that on line 30. There's the strike in the pocket. Tommy Baker, five step approach, roll low backswing, about 16th or 17th board at the arrows. That little spin release. He had wrist surgery back in the early 80s. Had to alter his game, slowed his ball speed down, and then started developing a little bit of that spin move at the bottom of the swing. But with these really strong high friction bowling balls, he's really made it work to his advantage. 40th best average on tour heading into Grand Rapids. Trying to increase that in the championship round here in the wild card match. A double on seven and eight and a 32 pin lead. Mike Machuga and the number five have gone together. This is the fifth tournament he's competing on the U.S. Tour. Did not bowl in Kansas City. And he was very close with his late grandmother. Early Audrey never. Louise Heverly. On his right sleeve, I believe it is. He's got her initials. That is left. Picks up his spare. He dedicates this entire tournament and his season to his late grandmother. His grandpa watching back home, Bernie Heverly. Call him grumpy. C 
see the numbers of the Banquet Classic. And our Randy Peterson with a 300 game. So that's Randy. That came in high, and he ends up with a split. Well, and that was his good lane, too. That's that's the trouble. This ball is going to drift high. Watch the sharp back end reaction here. Cuts right through the head pin. 6'10. Leaves one. Obviously, not his best showing and not indicative of what he did all week long to get to this point. Baker working on a double here with a big lead. On lane 30. Four pin. I think the thing we want to watch for as the matches progress and as this telecast progresses is that while I bowled on the TV pair, the lanes broke down very quickly, and I had to move my feet a lot. And Tommy Baker said that he was able to play multiple angles this week, from way outside to way inside and everything in between. Said it didn't matter. Baker has won officially. He will advance off to the semifinals to face the red hot Walter Ray Williams Jr. He goes for a second straight title. Fourth TV appearance for Walter Ray. Three pin there for Baker. He's happy for now. In a one-game match, he is off to the semis. Walter Ray surpassing Chris Barnes this past week at the Greater Detroit Open in Taylor. That's the side of the World Championship as well. What a season it's been for Walter Ray. And what a match this is for Tom Baker. Finishing the story about the number five with Machuga, his grandmother, with whom he was so close, passed on... 5.55 a.m. recently. Throughout the time she was very ill in the hospital, the family repeatedly found Nichols. Kind of that eerie connection with the number five that he was very, very close to her and wanted to make sure his family back home understood how much his grandparents, his family has meant to his development, trying to get himself Still got to me. a first career title. He'll have to wait. Gene McCune and Norn Duke are ready to go. The next match, we're going to fast track the end of this one because it's been clinched by Tom Baker of Buffalo, New York. A great week for Mike Machuga from Erie, Pennsylvania. Will fall a little short in a wild card match. 223 to 175. Walter Ray Williams next for Tom Baker. When we return, Eugene McCune throws one of the hardest spare balls on tour, head to head with Norm New from Florida. Norm Duke, ready to go now for the semifinals. You told me yesterday how heading into today's matches, you'd know how the confidence level was, either way up or way down. What do you feel like now? Well, I haven't got a strike in about 20 minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling at this point, but the confidence level is there. It's just a matter of getting lined up and, and running over somebody. Can you quickly reverse that and get yourself on track for the match? Oh, absolutely. That's what we do for a living. Good luck to you. Thank you. Randy, ninth last week in Detroit, Norm Duke. This is going to be a, a difference between a guy that throws the flamethrower and the finesse of Norm Duke. Eugene McCune, one of the most powerful balls, not only speed, but revolutions on the tour. And this guy can really bring it. Beat me last night to knock me out of the telecast, three to one. Watch this great push away. He can cover some lane, too, with that ball. Goes over to get a spare ball. Maybe a little superstition work in there. You know, he leaves a spare ball on the other pair of lanes in hopes of not having to use it. In search of his first ever tour title from Munster, Indiana. Picks up his 10 pin and his mark there. Family has made the three hour drive or so. Wife Chris and sons here to watch it in person. Mike and Kevin are his boys' names. You hear the 
Duke Duke from the fans here in Grand Rapids. Norm Duke in a great match with Patrick Allen. Came down to a game, fifth and deciding game. Norm Duke buckled up those shoes, tightened down the, those laces, and shot 268 in the final game to advance to the round of eight. Starts all the way off the back of the approach. Watch this finesse shot. Needs help. Ooh. Two pin. And a nice break, almost leaving the 2810. And Norm's decided to go with a much straighter outside shot. Problem is, there's not a lot of room for error out there. He gets a little too fast. A little left or a little right could spell disaster. Single pin conversion numbers. To jack up that stat a little bit. And there's the two pin for his mark. The seventh all time money winner in PBA history. 1.7 million plus dollars to his credit. Aided by the 19 titles. Eugene McHugh would like you to just get one championship right now. He's been grinding a long time on tour without it. Well, you see that ball gets down, down the lane and it just kind of wiggled when it was supposed to go to the left. Leaves a 2A10. I actually made this spare this week. I got the ball to the right side of the two pin, really light. 8-10 staying up for Eugene McHugh. You see how hard he throws that spare ball. 25 miles an hour normally. When he's angry like that, 31 plus miles an hour. The match wins. A round of 32 is the best in seven over Chris, Danny Wiseman, and our Randy Peterson went down in four last night in the round of eight. Actually has rubber tape on his fingers instead of finger inserts. Can he regroup? Ball on 29, 8 10. And that was a ball change. Leaves the 8 10, comes up light. The only thing missing from the last shot was the two pin. Eugene's going to throw it really hard right here at the 10. Split conversion right. Actually, he's going to try to throw a strike ball here. Doesn't go with a hard, heavy stuff. Just takes out the eight. So an open here for Eugene McCune. And he told us last night what an emotional bowler he is. And sometimes gets too down on himself. Right. Very frustrating. But right there, I think he was using his head because what he did was, instead of trying to bounce the pin out, he tried to throw a different strike line, a different angle to the pocket. Duke. Right now, Norm knows that the scoring pace isn't very high. He's trying to keep the ball right around the 1-3 pocket, and if he doesn't get there, leave, leaves himself with a makeable spare. <clears throat> Two-time PBA player of the year, 94 in the year 2000. Picks up his mark. First USA TV show of the year, also made one in Japan. Now watch where Norm Duke's going to slide right here about the 13th board right there. Whoops, right there. Take a, take a look at the difference between where Eugene's throwing it. That's some 25 boards difference, but I think you're going to see Eugene moving a little bit closer to where Norm is. <clears throat> a lot on the line emotionally for Norm Duke. Told us how crucial it is for him to make the Tournament of Champions. He badly wants to be in the TOC in Uncasville. Well, I think he's, what, second or third on the bubble. And he just thinks that sitting at home watching that tournament isn't right. Controls his own destiny now. Trips out the eight-pin late for a strike. Wow. This ball is perfect. One, three, flush. And watch this ball go right by the eight. Hello. He knows it's perfect. All of a sudden, the eight pin standing, and then it's gone. Eugene McCune, the son of PBA Hall of Famer Don, who won eight championships. 
And Gene gets pumped up here looking for his first career title. And, and a huge difference, a huge adjustment. And he based that off of that, that shot he threw in the third frame. Trust he moved yourself about 20 good shots. That's right, Eugene. M move about 25 boards to the right and just piped it straight up first arrow. Young son watching closely. Big theme this week for Eugene has been trust himself. Especially on that first ball. Strike here is down 15 pins. Got it. And it's a smart move that he that he made back in the third frame. All of a sudden now he's got a much different line, more ball speed, tight line right around five, six, seven board. Gets him a double. We're coming to you from Spectrum Lanes, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Actually in Wyoming near Grand Rapids, western part of this beautiful state. Dave Ryan and Randy Peterson who made the final eight this week. Coming so close to appearing on TV. We had Brian Boss as a backup just in case. Yeah, and I, got, I finally woke up and said, hey, don't quit my day job. <laughs> We're proud of you, buddy. Thanks, man. You think this guy doesn't want to win? Goes back to the passion we mentioned earlier. He wants to be in that top 26 <clears throat> for the Tournament of Champions, which is rapidly approaching, basically a month away now. Second on the bubble. Moran Jr. is first, so new winner, and Dennis is out. On lane 29, little double wood, two and eight. Go to two, Norman, good boy. Well, for Norm Duke, you know, he controls his own destiny, basically. If he takes care of Eugene, Eugene can't win, so there's one guy you take care of. Tom Baker already took care of our other non-winner, Mike Machug, in the wild card match. Norm knows if he beats Eugene, he's safe for another week or two weeks. Wants to raise the 70%. Multi-pin conversion number. Covers nicely for a mark. He has got a healthy 23-pin lead at the Banquet Classic in Western Michigan. It's a semifinal match. The winner off to the championship match, looking to take this week's PBA Tour title in Michigan. History of bowling in Western Michigan dates back to 1966 of the PBA Tour, 11 tournaments. It returns here today at the Banquet Classic. And Randy, time now for this week's Dexter Approach. My guy this week is Eugene McCune. I call him a power hurler. He can throw it straight and hard as, you, as you've been watching. He can also hook it. But here's the key. This right shoe right here is solid rubber underneath, and this is his pivot step. He's going to power into the foul line. Go ahead and rotate. Once he gets to the foul line, he wants some good traction, the waffle heel, something to bring that power step, that pivot step to a stop. That's this week's Dexter Approach. Down 23, looking for a triple, and he'll be down by 13 with another strike. Yeah. On lane 30. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> well, I saw a little bit of this last night when I bowled against Eugene. That ball was a little bit high. Gets a nice break, tripping the 4-7 out. Talk about a guy that wants to win. Come on. This guy's got 360-something tournaments under his belt. It's never won before. Hungry. He's a big nerd, so I think. He's come up with something better than that. Dave Ryan, help me out here. <laughs> Give me something. You put me on the spot, as usual. <laughs> Let's first check out the scores, bottom of your screen, from the round of 16 match play on, and you will see our Randy Peterson in there. Last night's big match. Not on a strike. A lot more emotion. <laughs> that. Oh, just a kind of, kind of a replay of what happened on the right lane. Guys in the truck, turn his mic down, because there might be some ears popping out there. He is into it. Four bagger now for Eugene, right back into it. Just down three pins. Duke works on a spare from his sixth frame. Perfect. Yeah, and that's why this guy is a future Hall of Famer. 
Why well, he's been as good as he's been for so long. He won a tournament at the age of 18, the young player, youngest player ever to win a PBA title, national title. And, you know, just whatever Eugene has done, it just doesn't affect this guy. He gets, he gets right up and takes care of business. Real soft hand at the bottom of the swing. Keep his hand underneath the ball to keep it on a direct line to the pocket. ESPN in sync. We show you his work on lane 29 and a 10 pin for him. Well, and it's the same kind of hit that Eugene McCune carried the last two times. However, the big difference is ball speed. You know, if we had a radar gun out there right now, I would assume that Norm's ball speed is probably 16, 17 miles an hour. Eugene's ball speed is probably about 20, 21, 22. That's on the first ball. Spare ball. <laughs> Spare ball kind of the roof. creates its own vortex going through the pins. I'd like to get a speed gun on that. Picks up his mark. Finesse bowling to perfection by Norm Duke. Strike here, he can take the lead. He'd be up seven, looking for a five bagger here, eight frame. After the tough start, opens in two and three. He has rallied. Closest he came to a championship was in 93. Lost the Bud Light National Championship. Yeah! All the way to the final. He can feel Trust it here. Yourself. Come on! Next week, we're coming to you from suburban Philadelphia. 36 lane center there. It's the first time the PBA has gone to Philly in 40 years. The Pepsi Open, 1 o'clock Eastern time, as PBA action continues here on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming to you from Sproul Lane, 30 minutes outside Philadelphia. Eugene used, used to be known for just a guy who, who came out and just threw rocket ships. He's got the whole package now. He can play in, he can play out, he can play in between. And right now, working on five in a row. Trying to set himself up. Foundation free and tie. Does it in style. 17 pin lead. This gives the uh, the term high hard one a whole new meaning because this guy is just throwing a laser beam at the one three pocket. Just throw it on a straight line and the pins have no chance. Two twenty seven max right now for Norm Duke. Perfect again on lane thirty. We've got a great match brewing here. Yeah, I think on this left lane, Dave, Norm needs to take a page out of Eugene McCune's book right, and just amp it up. Come on. Throw a little bit harder. Come on. Norm can throw hard. Come on. Hear the self-motivation. On TV 73 times. Lots of experience. Four pin. Well, that looked like a pretty good shot when he left his hand. If it was a little bit faster, it would have held line, but watch the ball break loose right at the back end part of the lane. Drifts high and leaves a four pin. Right. As good as I can throw it, buddy. Those last two are just so pure. He agrees with you, Randy. Right on the money in the pocket. Picks up the mark. Norm strikes here. He's going to shoot 207. Eugene's going at a 224 pace. The only thing Eugene needs to do is keep it on the lane. He's going to throw it really hard at the head pin, and he'll be a winner. This lane, what am I going to do? Eight pin this time. Great showing all week, Norm Duke. Just seven pins to win now for Eugene McCune. Looking for his first ever career title. Look out in the back. Cranks it. Wow. <laughs> 30 plus miles an hour, what do you think on lane 30? Give him the heater, Ricky. Live Chris. 
is informing his young son that in fact, dad's advanced. Mike and Kevin are very pleased. Making the trip up from Monster, Indiana. 10-3 match play this week, almost a 2.20 average for Eugene. Dave, I think the big difference in Eugene McCune now versus yeah. two years back is mental. I mean, look at that move that he made in the third frame, left the 8-10 split. He could have thrown it really hard at the 10-pin or the 8-pin and try to bounce it out and make that. Instead, he chose to move right and try to find a different strike line, and the next thing you know, throw six in a row. There has been one new tour champ this year, Patrick Haley Jr. One in Kansas City. There are three new winners last year. Perhaps a new one again here today in Grand Rapids. Eugene McCune would love that to happen. He takes care of Norm Duke. 222-206. Red Hot Walter Ray Williams Jr. is next to the semifinals. McCune is off to the championship match. Who will he play? We find out next. We are back, Spectrum Lanes in Grand Rapids, getting set for Baker Walter Ray Williams Jr. I'll tell you about the points list for Brian Voss, who won in Memphis a couple of weeks back. A runner-up last week in Detroit is on the way up. Let's get to know him in Miller Life. Get to know him. Hello, wie geht's? Ich heiße Brian Voss und ich wohne jetzt in Atlanta, Georgia. I got started bowling when I was six years old. I lived in Anchorage, Alaska. My father owned a bowling center. That was a thing to do up in Alaska. You either uh, played ice hockey, skied. Uh, summer, you played baseball for about a month, or you bowled. I went into the service as a very wild uh, teenager, not knowing what I was going to do with my life. My actual occupation, they taught me how to fix radar, which was really good training. but. I bowled as much as I could in the service. That was that was really my job. He spoke a sehr good Deutsch, nur wenig Schmutz. When I was in Germany, uh, I dated a German girl. She didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any German. It was the best relationship you could imagine. <laughs> the great athletes, I think, you know, thrive on on knowing that there's millions of people out there that they are entertaining. Get to know them. Brian Voss has been red hot, as has Walter Ray Williams, Jr., the Hall of Famer. The most active consecutive seasons with at least one tour win. He had one last week in Detroit. He takes on Tom Baker. Another semifinal comes your way next. The PBA Tour's history in Western Michigan dates back to 1966. In 93, the inaugural event at Spectrum Lanes was won by Walter Ray Williams Jr., who trounced Bob Learn in the final match. In 94, Dave Ferraro was nearly perfect at the Great Lakes Classic, beating out Norm Duke in the championship match. The 1995 event saw Danny Wiseman win all four of his matches to claim the title. The last match victory coming over John Mazza. And who can forget last year? Pete Weber took the title over Parker Bone III. In the process, throwing a memorable 299 game in the semifinals. It was Pete's 26th title, tying him with his father Dick for all-time victories. CB Pair was 29 and 30 for Pete Weber's run last year. Same this year. We started with 160 of the world's best. A fourth straight week of a full field. We're down to the last three. McCune already in the championship match. Walter Ray Williams Jr. hopes to join him. He's joined now by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Walter Ray, the ho hottest player on the PBA Tour. How is it that you're able to perform at such a high level week in and week out? Well, sometimes I make good shots. <laughs> <laughs> Only sometimes? Uh, I've been bowling great lately. Um, been getting some good breaks in matches, uh, advancing forward. Uh, I just hope it continues. Well, now at 43 years of age, can you bring the heat like Eugene did in the last match? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Walter. Good luck. Back to you, Dave Ryan. Going for back-to-back -back titles, Randy. Semi-finals against Baker. The last to win back-to-back -back PBA titles, none other than Walter Ray Williams, Jr. In Canandaigua, New York, and Brunswick at the Johnny Petraglia Open. 
Speaking of Canandaigua, that's Western New York, not far from Buffalo. Is that town and city of Buffalo is where Tom Baker is from. Seeking career title number 10. Good start. Speaking of hot, <laughs> this guy is on fire. And you look back to the last three times someone has won back-to-back -to -back tour titles, it's all Walter Ray Williams, Jr. We told you about the year 2000, Canandaigua in the Brunswick. Come on, baby. Good start for him, did it as well in 98, February in Erie, Pennsylvania and Toledo, Ohio, and October, November, Bay City, Michigan, and Indy in 98 also. Well, you know, we saw Eugene go really, really straight. This is a little bit of a hook here for Walter Ray. And Walter Ray obviously has all the tricks. He can hook it a little bit. His best line is where he's playing right now, even a little bit right of that, as you see what he's done. Man. What he's done. It, this is our Tiger Woods, folks. Four of six TV shows yeah. on the U.S. side. Ooh. Continues to stay hot with a double. And no disrespecting the late great Earl Anthony, but in my opinion, even though Earl had more titles than Walter Ray has at this time, and I think there's a lot of players on tour that'll agree with me, Walter Ray Williams Jr., the best player ever on the PBA Tour. As dominant as Walter Ray has been, overall, not so against Tom Baker. Three and one. On TV. Four pin there. A little high, and it looked like it was a little left out of his hand. Tommy told me earlier today that things really turned around for him when the new tour was formed in this new format. He actually took nine months off, but he says living in the city of Buffalo, he says it's a very tough city to bowl in all the local tournaments around town. A lot of great bowlers from the city of Buffalo. He said he uh, won a couple of tournaments, felt good about right. what he was doing, and Thanks. decided to come back out. Tom Baker stays at 100% single pin conversion rate. Last TV appearance, Randy, goes back to, speaking of New York State, Central New York and Syracuse at the ABC Masters in May of 99. So it has been a while for him. Rooms with Brad Angelo, who is a rookie on our tour, although not a rookie to bowling. He was He's had a great amateur career, and Brad's really flourished on tour this year. I, I think he's made every cut for the first six weeks. Be good. Yeah, yeah. He knew it. Perfect in the pocket. All 10 down to the pit for Tom Baker. Well, this guy here, last night, I bowled next to him for both of my matches, a round of 16 and a round of 8. We were both trailing in our first round. We were down 0-2. We both came back and won the next three games to advance. And he did a lot of that. In a round of 8, he bowled against Tommy DeLutz. Tommy DeLutz bowled a great match. And Walter just bowled better. As you see his wife, Paige. We understand she has successfully negotiated the motorhome. It has <laughs> been purchased in Detroit. And as soon as, as we told you last week, the story, as soon as this term is over, they're going right back across the state of Michigan east to Detroit, about a three-hour drive. And they're going to pick it up. It's going to Philadelphia for next week's tour stop. We'll see it. I can't wait. Look that. that came in high. Yeah, and, it, you know, that's wow. the hooking lane. And his first shot on that lane went a little, was high flush. Ball doesn't push far enough to the right. Walter needs to either adjust his angle by moving left or speeding up his ball. He's got to get the ball over into here, drive the three over into the seven pin. Three, six, ten, and the seven. Tough challenge. Oh, and misses the seven pin in open frame. And opening the door for Tom Baker. A lot of people ask, well, what, you know, or wonder why didn't he throw, you know, a, a ball that hooks and just kind of feed it towards that, the uh, edge of the right gutter and have it hook back into that? Well, this week, if he got it too far right, it fell in. So I understand why he would go with the spare ball to shoot that. Looking for a double and a six-pin lead on lane 30. Perfect. And a much better shot on that lane. matchup and surprisingly he likes the left lane better uh, here it is lane 29 wow. 
Six deep feats of success again for Baker. Beautiful reaction. And just jumped all over that open frame in the fourth by Walter Ray. You know, I made the statement earlier about eliminating Mike Machuga and uh, Norm Duke eliminating Eugene McCune that Norm would be safe in the TSC. I forgot about Tom Baker. Pocket, Walter Ray strikes on the fifth frame. Talking to Walter Ray yesterday, Randy, about how hot he's been. See the strike percentage for each. I asked him, do you feel invincible? And he said, last week I had an open frame in Detroit. It's that one mistake, just erring for a second, losing that focus and concentration. An open frame can do you in because of the great competition when you get this far in a tournament. His open came in the fourth, maybe a little break for Baker. Six pin here. Wow. Yeah, not not real sure what's going on with that left lane. You know, and there's two schools of thought here. Walter can stay where he's at and throw it faster, or he can move left and open it up. This guy doesn't make a lot of bad shots, so it's pretty easy. One, when his ball doesn't hit the 1-3 pocket, it's not, a lot of guys second-guess themselves. A lot of people at home that pull league get to second-guess themselves. A mark for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Trying to win back-to-back -back titles. Hasn't been done in a couple of years. He was the last to accomplish it, but it won't be easy now. He's in a 16-pin hole head-to-head -head with Buffalo's Tom Baker. We've got more of this exciting semifinal match coming your way next. Move some three hours west, 175 miles from the Greater Detroit Open to the Banquet Classic near Grand Rapids, Michigan in Wyoming. Let's check in with this week's Days In on the Road. We're going to Sprawl Lanes outside Philly next week, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and then Syosset Lanes on the island, followed by the Big TOC. Big money on the line, the world's best in the Mohegan Sun Arena, Uncasville, Connecticut. The regional schedule. These event stops in Fresno, Surfside, South Carolina, and Columbia, the state's capital. <laughs> Continuing this semifinal. Open frame for Walter Ray in the fourth. Looking for a four-bagger now is Tom Baker. A strike here. He's up 26 pins. Leaves the legend deep in thought. I'm not happy. Well, he got the ball just a little bit light, a little wide. A spare shot now, he spreads that index finger. Get his hand more up the back of it, nice and straight. All right. All right. All right. All right. Tommy Baker, at 48 years of age, he can still bowl and watch his profile, watch him just release, but look how far behind the foul line he is. Gets that ball into a real early roll. With that spin release, he's got to have something to get that ball started. Tommy, you can't use the approach to get the ball rolling. Got to get it on the lane, my friend. On number seven. Who comes in light. Well, that ball pushes further right. Doesn't have enough to get back from there. The lanes aren't that forgiving. Takes the three-pin straight back, leaves the one, two, four, six, ten. Two ways to make this. You can get the ball on the left side of the head pin or the right side here. Pins go this way, ball goes that way. You saw the multi-pin spare conversion numbers. Leaves the six, ten, an open frame now. All right. Well, Tom Baker on the seventh. Each have an open frame. Walt Wheeler, Mike Eaton. Spectrum Lane's co-proprietors. Many thanks to those gentlemen. Fine host to us. Our ESPN crew this week. Mike Eaton's son. Bowling on our tour. <laughs> Wiggling. Won't go. Wow. How the five pin not drop, Ren? I'm not sure. Got hit about three times. That ain't right. And you're right, Walter Ray. That's not right. It's amazing. You could <laughs> get it left, get it right. Oh, 
You know, you could turn around and go solid eight or solid nine right after a shot like that and just kind of scratch your head and go, why? Picks up his mark. Rama there for a second, but he's got it. We're coming here from Spectrum Lanes near Grand Rapids, Wyoming, Michigan, and the Banquet Classic PBA Tour stop, the March of the World Championship, which will take place in Taylor, Michigan, outside of Detroit. Continues here on ESPN. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Great job by Mike Eaton and his staff here at Spectrum. <laughs> Urging a strike, but a 10-pin. want to quickly mention, in addition to our crew, of course, includes our producer, Mike Roth, our director, Scott Katz, and happy birthday yesterday to Mike's little daughter, Chloe, four years old yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. Mike, make sure you give Chloe a big hug and a kiss from Rand. Happy birthday, Chloe. Uh, Walter Ray made a ball change in the left lane there. Went to a shinier ball, move right, which is the move. You go to a lower friction ball. Keep the ball in line. Picks up the 10 pin. We are all even. Tommy Baker can strike out, shoot 232. Walter Ray Williams Jr. can strike out for 222. Eight frame. Got it. Great knee bend for a guy that's 48 years old, wouldn't you say? And watch the six pin, second to the right. Tomahawk the 10 out. Tommy Baker controls his own destiny right here, setting up the 10th frame in the foundation frame, the ninth frame. Strike here, he cannot be shut out. We'll show it to you on ESPN in sync. Strike here, 10 pin lead. 4 7. I remember the shot before on that lane went light, left that real ugly five count washout. Tendency is to make sure that you don't get it right again. Ball's just a pinch left. Sparrow, he'll be going at a 202 pace. Walter Ray Williams Jr. can strike out ninth, 10th, and 11th to win the match. All right. See the conversion rates. He covers 4 7. But an opening again for Walter Ray Williams Jr., who has just been phenomenal. The tour leader in points, in earnings, and an average 10 and 3 record, 230 plus average in match play this week. All-time money winner. Tour history. Because of huge shots like that. Last night, quite a bit. Excuse me, Dave. Last night against David Ozio, Walter Ray Williams Jr. struck out second and third game when he needed to. A little movement. We're going to reset the shot clock. Going in the thumb hole to get a good grip, good feel. A double and one to win. Does he have a start? Yeah. Late seven. And did you see the adjustment on that lane? He went with the fast one. He gave it a little Eugene McCune here. The high hard one. He moves right, goes to a ball that doesn't have as much surface. It goes much straighter, dead flush in the pocket. And watch this reaction. One more. You heard him. Just needs one more. Fan right behind him with the traditional Walter Ray Williams Jr. mask. He passes those out before each event. And wife Paige has seen incredible bowling from her husband all season. Oh, that almost wow. crossed over a little high and a 10 pin. And you heard him say there's a serious hook spot there, and, and people watching at home are going to say, that ball looked really slow. The reason why it looked really slow is because as soon as it hit the lane, friction was created, and when friction happens, the ball speed goes down. Spare here, Tommy Baker can strike out to win by one pin. Walter Ray has his mark. Three strikes in the tenth on his good lane. Tommy will advance. 
championship match against Eugene McCune. Walter Ray Williams finishing out at 2 11. Does Baker have the answer? No. Well, that's too bad. Tommy Boyd's so good all week long to come up with a shot like that in the 10th frame. And you know he's disappointed with that. Now it's going to be Walter Ray and Eugene McCune. And I'm going to venture to bet, or to say, that they're both going to be throwing the heat. Ooh. Looking for back-to-back -back titles, looking for his first ever title is Eugene McCune. You don't think there's any money on the PBA Tour now? If Walter Ray wins this week, it's only $100,000 he's made in the last three weeks. That's not bad. I'd say not. Great showing for Tom Baker of Buffalo, New York. Comes close to the semifinals. Walter Ray Williams Jr. stands tall over Tom and the rest of the field right now. He has been completely dominant, looking for a second straight title. McCune stands in the way. There you go. Four on seat, Pete Weber as the Banquet Classic champion. He won with a dramatic 299 in the semis a year ago. Here it's either McCune or Walter Ray Williams Jr. Next week, the PBA Tour and our ESPN coverage heads to Philadelphia. The first time the PBA has been in that area in 40 years. 30 Lane Center. We go to Sproul Lanes outside Philly. 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Welcome back to the one day behind Randy Peterson. Can anyone stop the Walter Ray Williams Jr. train? The Express is just rolling through everyone right now. Well, you know, whether he needs to strike out in the 10th frame to win or one of his opponents needs to, they don't, he does. But I think he's going to have his hands full with Eugene McCune. Eugene McCune's got that heart thumping right now, looking for his first career title. Let's look into the championship recap. Tommy Baker, the wild card match. That nice soft floater. Taking out Michael Machuga. In semifinal number one, watch the heat coming right at you. Wow. Eugene McKeon takes care of Norm Duke. And in semifinal number two, Walter Ray makes the ball change on the left lane. Tommy Baker had a chance to beat him. Came up 10 pins short. Confidence for Walter Ray Williams Jr. has got to be on a high. Not only is he rolling over the entire PBA Tour right now, looking for a second straight win, but he's undefeated head-to-head -head with Eugene McCune. They've never met, though, in a championship match until now. McCune bids for a first-ever title. The Hall of Famer looks to continue the roll next on ESPN. Last week at the Greater Detroit Open, Mr. Hockey himself, Gordy Howe, was on hand. Two PBA heavyweights squared off in the championship match, Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Brian Voss. In the end, Walter Ray took home his 35th career title, moving him in his sole possession, second place in the all-time victory list behind the legendary Earl Anthony and his 41 titles. Yes, baby. Woo. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Randy Peterson pointed out a moment ago that on lane 29, you made a ball change. Are you confident now with your layout, and is the confidence just pretty much overflowing with you overall? Well, not exactly. That uh, I had a little trouble with that last pair. I was fortunate Tom gave me an opening uh, to let me come back, and I threw a couple of good shots at the end. Uh, the left lane started hooking a little bit more for me where I was trying to play, so I'm... Had a couple practice shots, and I think I've got to. I think I've got it figured out, but we'll find out real quick. Good luck on getting title Thank number you. 36. You. Eugene McCune, you told me yesterday about your focus and how confident you felt, trusting yourself. You did that in the semifinal match. Do you feel you can do it one more time? It's my week. I'm gonna trust myself <laughs> to win this week. Best of luck to you. First title match for him since '93, Randy. Well, Dave Ryan, you know the last time I made it to the round of eight. I got beat by the eventual champion. That was last year at the World Championships. Doug Kent beat me in that round and went on to win the tournament in $120,000. Right now, Eugene McCune took care of me last night. And you know what? When I bowled Doug Kent, I won the first game. He came back and won the next three. Last night against Eugene McCune, I won the first game. He came back and won the next three. So we'll see if fate is on the side of Mr. McCune.
What a start. <laughs> wow. David Ellis with us, the senior marketing manager from Banquet Foods. Very glad to have Banquet aboard on the PBA Tour. Walter. Title sponsor for this event. Walter Ray right behind his left shoulder, or right shoulder. He's everywhere right now, I'm sure. <laughs> Look out. Late messenger just misses the 10. You know, and here's the interesting thing that Walter talked about the left lane and how it had a hook spot. Well, there's, there's a couple ways to get your ball to not hook. One of them Boy. is to throw it really, really hard, and the other is to loft it. Eugene is throwing it really, really hard. I'm not even sure his ball's reading the first 15 feet of the lane. The hook spot shouldn't even be an issue for him. Picks up the 10 pin. Deadeye's resume continues to grow five-time PBA player of the year. And that's really his goal, Randy, coming into this season. Could he return for the first time since 98 as the player of the year? He really looks to what Earl Anthony accomplished throughout his great Hall of Fame career. Earl Anthony won a title 14 straight years. This is 10 in a row now for Walter Ray. That's a current record. You can't argue with the possibility of returning to the Chris Schenkel Award win with the way he's bowled in the first couple of months. Wash in the pocket. A lot deeper on that left lane. He has to be. You know, you, you want to move left when you find too much hook. That's the general rule. Your ball hooks high. Move left. Move your feet two or three boards to, to every one board you move your target. That keeps your angle pretty much the same. You don't want to just move your feet and not your target because then you'd be still throwing it in the dry part of the lane. Move your feet and your target. A little late messenger. He'll take it gladly. Right with the Chris here from Munster. With the pin carry this guy's getting, you know, some, every now and then you, you, you get breaks, things go your way, and, and you, you just got to tell yourself, man, this, this is my week. This, everything's going my way. He got that ball left. It's just, it just stayed, held its line. There's his little guy. Held its line, and he had the great carry there, tripping the nine-pin last. Shot clock there right to his left. Ticking down. Pin action. Back to back trip nines. You heard how confident he was in our interview prior to the start of this championship match. The legend tries to answer and does again. <laughs> Well, let's see. If everybody strikes out, Eugene will shoot 300, and Walter Ray will shoot 290. And <laughs> that would be great, but right now, Walter Ray, with a strike here, evens the match. None of that stuff that Eugene's doing, my week, all that, any of that talk is going to affect what this guy does once he steps up on the lanes. I mean, the guy's been on TV 140 times. You might as well call it the Walter Ray Williams Jr. show on ESPN. Incredibly focused. On lane 29. Wow. He won't be happy with that one. And that's something he didn't expect. That ball looked pretty good and it just went right through the break point. Watch it just shoot right there. Doesn't continue on or continue hooking into the pocket. Best spare shooter on tour right here. All of them. A lot to cover. Ah, Not all. No. An open frame on the fourth for Walter Ray Williams Jr. We'll see if Eugene McCune, seeking his first ever PBA title, can take advantage. A triple to start for him. More of the final match when we come back. Western Michigan, the site. McCune hoping to make some history today. 
Walter Ray Williams Jr. has won 35 career PBA titles. A Hall of Famer trying to become Player of the Year again. He's against Eugene McCune, who's never won. WalterRay.com, you can log on and find out what happened when Randy said Walter was the best spear shooter on tour and he misses the bucket. Sorry about that, Walter Ray. Eugene McCune working on three in a row. Four bagger, 36 pin lead, and he's got it. And out of commercial break, that's pretty normal. Get a little soft. That ball didn't hold line. A little left to target and kind of soft. Well, soft for him. He's throwing at 22 miles an hour. Now, cover all three pins with the ball. Three, six, and ten. Spare ball. This one's going to be fast. Just looks like he's rushing it. Throws it so hard and covers. Yes! Yes! Again, we see uh, <laughs> things are just, I mean, if he looked down right now, he'd find a $100 bill in on the ground. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets a good break with the six going to the wall, tripping the 10 out. He told yeah. us yesterday he has to bowl emotionally. If he's going to hold things in, then he has the troubles. Like his dad Don did on tour, winning. Look out. Yes, that's what I'm talking about! Yes! <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> that, that was really fast. In the interview before this final match, he said, this is my week. And you hear still saying, your week, this is it for him. The confidence at an all-time high. The numbers incredibly high for Walter Ray with his amazing career. Ten pin. Big time ring and ten there in the fifth frame. Make the spare here, get lined up on the left lane. Put some heat on Eugene McCune. Remember that graphic there includes all splits. Spare conversions this week. Oh, is that just single pins? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, not a lot of single pin splits, my bad. Down 23 now. We'll forgive you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Left my glasses back in the room. Looking around. Come on. All right. Well, it just, Eugene's not running away with this yet. Walter Ray's going to 194 clip. He just struck there. He can strike out for 244. Eugene's going at 217 pace. So a lot can happen there. The max scores possible for each. Strike here puts Eugene in the 220s. Last year, he competed in 27 events, Randy. He won just over 31,000. He's on the verge of winning a $40,000 check. And he is just letting that ball rip. March to the PBA. World Championship in March in Taylor, Michigan, outside Detroit. Walter Ray Williams is the points leader. He overtook Chris Barnes by winning last week. Point breakdown available, 25,000 points. Could go to Eugene McCune if he keeps it going. Is he ever pumped? Got to keep his emotions in check. Can't be hooping up too much to where you, you just throw it so hard you just blow it right through everything. Still going to make good shots. Struck on five or six frames. Spinning pin, hoping the seven might go down. Won't reach it. Son of a biscuit eater. Easy, pal. <laughs> make it spin. Wow. Well, light switch zone messenger. That thing was hard. Remember the last ball in that lane? Pretty much dead flush like every other shot except one in the fourth. This one just a pinch light. 
Nothing better on the PBA Tour than the body language of the players. Trying to get that messenger. Yeah, to... you have to talk to him. <laughs> Sometimes it works. In that case, Eugene couldn't twist and turn enough. You have to talk to him. Picks up the mark. 32 pin lead for McCune. Never turn your back on these via pins. They fly great. They they dance all over the uh, the back part of the lane, the pin deck. But you can't turn your back on them. Works on a strike. Strike here. He's down 22. Yeah, yeah. Finds it. Hello, I'm back. Watch this great shot. Walter Ray Williams Jr. knows that with a strike here, he can cut the lead to 22. One more in the eighth frame, he can cut it to 12. And he just made a perfect shot. Needs to back it up with one more here. Eighth frame, left lane. What kind of adjustments is he thinking about? Left lane has given him some troubles. Well, he struck in the, the last, last shot on this lane. Just duplicate that last shot. Ten pin. Well, that was a pretty good shot, too. The ball just doesn't enter the pocket hard enough and leaves the weak 10. And the six pin just lays in the, in the channel instead of going to the sidewall and taking care of the 10. Spare here. The best Walter Ray Williams Jr. can shoot is 223. Eugene McCune going at a 226 pace. It's Eugene McCune's tournament to win or lose right now. He knows it well, and a chance to make his turn of history here at Spectrum Lanes in Western Michigan. Dave Ryan, Randy Peaster, our entire ESPN PBA crew. Steel Timber Sports Series 3 comes up next on ESPN as soon as we finish business. The McCune family hopes the business is a $40,000 first place check. Yeah. Eugene, yeah. Yeah. big strike yeah. on lane 30. Yeah. The last time we bowled on pattern C was in Kansas City. Patrick Keeley Lovely. won. He was a non-winner. This is pattern C again. Eugene McCune, a non-winner. All he has to do is fill frames. Spare in the ninth, strike spare in the tenth frame. He's going to be our newest champion and eliminate Dennis Horan for the TSC. Comes up in December. Mohegan Sun Arena, Uncasville, Connecticut, with big money on the line. And it bumps Norm Duke one step up, right to the bubble. Didn't like that from the release. Seven down. Okay, but that's okay. He's working on a strike, which means if he spares, he's not going to lose count. He's right now three pins ahead in that count. That would be not trusting yourself. Spare here, a strike spare in the 10th frame. He's a winner. Regardless of what Walter Ray does. If he misses this, it's anybody's game. Sorry. multi bin conversion numbers. Sorry. Not going to a spare ball. He's going to hook this one. Covers. I'll tell you what, normally not a real tough spare, but it was, I guarantee it was pretty hard for him to get that one off his hand. Down 23. A big hole. Two pin. Trust yourself. That's been his theme all week. Walter needs to convert the two pin, go to the left lane, strike out to force Eugene McCune to mark. Anything less, Eugene McCune's going to be a new winner. Walter Ray strikes out, I shoot 212. Eugene would need, need nine on the first ball, and that would be it. Now he doesn't need anything. Eugene McCune wins sitting on the bench. It is first time over. Over for Eugene McCune.
open frame. Walter Ray Williams Jr. will not repeat. As a PBA Tour winner, this time around. Yeah. He had that heater cranked up. 30 plus miles an hour. Another mark. His wife, Chris. Must be ecstatic she made the drive from Munster, Indiana. Because her husband, Eugene, is a PBA Tour title winner. Put on a show. Yeah, what a great feeling to win your first title. He's worked. He's worked really, really hard. He's been out here a long time. It's just no other feeling like it. And he played to his strength. He went with the with the heat, got oh, the ball in line on a tough lane condition. Oh, he loves me so much. Three days trophy. It took 366 Three career trophy. events, but he's done it. He, said you a small he has the trophy, most right? career earnings for a full-time active player, having not trophy. won. Until now, he is a champion. I'll tell you what, Eugene McCune is now in new company. It's a lot different to be a champion on the PBA Tour. Now he can really hold his head high up, think about all that hard work paying off. Congratulations to Eugene. His victory today guarantees him a spot in the PBA Tournament of Champions. Be sure to join us next Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Our live coverage of the PBA Tour continues. It's the Pepsi Open near Philly. Now stay tuned. Males, the main steal. Timber Sports is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. More log on to ESPN.com. For Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Grand Rapids.